and welcome to our latest podcast in the Thought Leadership series. I'm Jennifer Jones, Director of Consultancy Services at Collingwood Consulting, and today I have with me Dr Paul Turner to discuss the topic of neuroscience in relation to leadership and organisational change. Paul is Principal Consultant with Collingwood and the joint author of our recent white paper titled Neuroscience, What Does It Mean for Organisational Dynamics? Paul has an outstanding track record of business success, both as an executive director responsible for multi-channel sales, customer service and HR, and also before moving into consultancy in 2006. He gained his PhD in organisational leadership behaviour in 2011 and regularly publishes papers and books on leadership, as well as maintaining active academic links with several universities and business schools. This includes being a visiting professor for Staffordshire University. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Jennifer. I should point out the other joint author of our white paper on neuroscience was you. I know this is a massive area to you and thank you for helping me with the literature review and research conclusions. <laughs> Thanks, thank Paul. Yeah, I, I find the whole area of, of neuroscience so exciting and relevant and useful to our work. Anything which helps you know, increase performance in a way that brings people with us is, is worth the investment in my eyes. Um, so thank you for taking the, the time to talk with us this morning on this topic. Uh, the white paper's generated lots of interest from our clients and today's podcast is an opportunity just to discuss the findings a little more and, and bring it to life. So to start us off, what exactly is neuroscience and why, why is it important to executives and leaders? Neuroscience is a study of the anatomy and physiology of the brain. The term neuroleadership is about bringing the scientific knowledge from neuroscience into leadership so as to support organisations to understand behaviours and optimise performance. So the white paper sets out the latest learning in this field. Can you just give us a top line view of the approach taken to create the white paper? Yeah, certainly. Well, we undertook a wide ranging literature review of evidence based research and case studies relating to neuroscience, specifically in relation to leadership and organisational dynamics, uh, so as to identify proven, pragmatic, and practical neuro strategies and interventions around leadership or change management, transformation, and performance. So we can be sure then that we have the latest learning that's available? Yes, we can. Well, certainly up to 1st May, the date of the White Paper's publication. Well, that's, that's a very good point. Um, yes, things move, move along very fast in today's world, so much, um, so much for the, the, the rigour of the study. Why is this White Paper important to our business and executive clients? Well, the interest in neuroscience is currently sky high, whether around the ways of knowledge of the brain helps us to become more self-aware so as to avoid derailing behaviours, or by increasing our focus on the positive potential of our personality attributes. Those leaders who grasp the power of this new leadership frontier will gain a personal competitive leadership edge. The problem for leaders is that just so much out there. So we thought our clients would value a focused summary of neuroscience and learning to date in the context of the workplace. So sorting the wheat from the chaff, as it were. You know, a lot of it is interesting, but in our field of expertise, is it useful? So you you make the point that the white paper, uh, in the white paper, that neuroscience has been regulating human behaviour since prehistoric times, and that then humans were unaware of the reasons behind their behaviour. And the really scary point is we're still no wiser, yet surely we're, we're getting there, aren't we? Mm, yeah. Well, we've started the journey, that, that's for sure. The human brain is the most complex object in the known universe. It's 100 billion neurons, it's close to a quadrillion connections between them. We don't even fully understand one single cell. So neuroscience aims to understand how a person arises out of a clump of squishy matter. It's where psychology meets biology. However, it's, it's fair to say with the help of computer simulations, medical imaging and many brilliant human brains working in unison, we're doubling our knowledge every decade. So whilst our understanding of the brain has increased, even with this rate of learning, if we liken our progress to scaling Mount Everest, say, 
we're probably still only at base camp. Base camp, but the doubling of our knowledge every decade will no doubt increase the pace of learning even more. Uh, this is evident by the amount of neuroscience articles and publications. I mean, a new one comes out every day almost. Rarely a week goes past without another book on a new book on neuroscience being published. So what's your pick of the best of them? That's an impossible question, Jenny. You know, readers of David Rock's work, a neuro guru, as it were. Uh, so for those keen on getting a very detailed understanding, I'd recommend anything by him. And our white paper refers to and provides details of some key rock titles. For the more pragmatic minded leader or leaders, who are looking for leadership applications that can be expressed simply and are easy to use, then my favourite in this regard is The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. Oh, yeah, that, that's a great pick and one we've used in many of our transformation programmes. Steve Peters brilliantly brings out the power of increasing self-awareness and emotional regulation. It's a fantastic book. Yeah, he, he looks at the brain through a psychological lens and, and he takes three critical elements that drive human behaviour. First, uh, the paratire part or the computer storage section consisting of neurocircuitry which drives brain functioning. He calls this a computer. Uh, secondly, the frontal lobe, which helps us to consciously engage and sift through reality, so as to rationalise the events we face. He names this the adult. And thirdly, the limbic, or the chimp, which provides us with our thoughts around emotions, feelings and impressions. So, when you're in a chatter, and we both can... can uh, understand this Jen we both had the inner chatter many times during our lives and so when the inner chatter start to say should have or if only you're likely being chimp unfortunately for us the the chimp gets the event information first uh, and can cause mayhem before the computer can pass it on to the frontal lobe the adult yeah very powerful he even gives it a way to check if you're in chimp mode doesn't he yes if you're in doubt, Peter says, as to whether emotional drivers have been triggered and the chimp is in control, then ask yourself if you want the feelings and thoughts you're experiencing or, or if you want to be showing such behaviour. If the answer is no, you don't, then you're in chimp mode. Paul, we, we could talk about Steve Peter's work for several hours, but maybe that's another podcast topic. Um, the white paper talks about the chimp paradox and gives many more neuroscience behavioural tips and applications. One of the most impactful points for me was that social pain, or social driven pain, is similar to physical pain in terms of the brain's response and reaction. So that in neuroscience terms, a broken leg feels similar to a broken heart or a feeling one gets when, when they're socially excluded at work. Yeah, and 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 that's very powerful is that to many people a boss micromanaging them involves the same neuro brain reaction as that caused by someone walking behind them along a dark alley <laughs> amazing and i'm sure we can all identify with that but in, in a nutshell then where where is neuroscience why why should executives be interested uh, and what's the big learn for organizational change for example yeah it's clear that neuroscience is, is now established. It's a key learning field, particularly for those interested in leadership and organisational development. It originating in the 60s, it, it emerged in the 90s and the 21st century as a new way of assessing and developing leadership behaviour. Our clients who use our open assessment approach will vouch for the benefits this can bring. The latest learning... Uh, that's coming out, relates to organisational change dynamics and how neuroscience can inform strategies through neuro-driven strategy and leadership development techniques and tools. Basically, it's about helping leaders to help their people adapt better to the organisational changes that are happening around them. Yeah, pe people have a natural resistance to change and go into a threat state, don't they, which often limits their ability to focus and make insightful de uh, decisions at a time when decision making is, is so critical. Uh, research shows that levels of creativity are also significantly reduced and as leaders we want to move our people back into a balanced state as quickly as possible. 
to the, allow them to make more informed and more insightful decisions? Yeah, as part of the change process, it's essential to provide a really strong vision of the future. So understanding the possibilities and the benefits and the opportunities that the future may hold can be a positive thing as we empower people to take responsibility for their own development, their own future. So perhaps, you know, leaders um, might want to take a look around their organisations today, including the front of the house, and see what's happening and how that's reflecting on the organisation and the brand. Conscious and open awareness is the key to building a, a positive and engaging culture. Yeah, often when, when I go into an organisation, I don't even need to ask the question of you know, how do people feel about the change or the transformation that they're undergoing. You know, you can see and feel it straight away from initial engagements at the front of house. Uh, when work environments change, people feel threatened and no amount of logic and rationale will overcome that, that fear. You know, it's such a natural emotional response and it drives a fight, freeze or, or flight reaction. We know through the work that we do that just do it, change communications wrapped up in aggressive and threatening behaviour just don't succeed. And the quotation in the white paper sums it up for me. Uh, tell people the facts, they will learn. Tell people the truth and they will believe. Tell people a story and it will live in their hearts forever. But where's the hard evidence for this, You know, for the application of neuro-driven leadership and change strategies? The, the evidence is there uh, and it's growing by the day. But you do have to look for it. Uh, our white paper shows validated neuroscience-driven uh, strategies have achieved significant return on investment. Uh, there's one study um, showing a 28 to 1 return on investment, plus other studies showing improvements in employee engagement uh, and productivity of 76% and 50%. So research shows that to achieve such tangible success, requires a neuroholistic approach to organisation development and by aligning neuroscience principles and applications to the big three organisational dynamic drivers. That, that's strategy, structure and culture. Um, what about innovation and creativity? We, we've mentioned that uh, a bit already, but it was also the top CEO priority that we found in the research that we did earlier, earlier this year. What findings align to that? Yeah, this, this is a big one. I, I can't think of a client yet, Jennifer, that we've, we've, we've worked with that hasn't asked for more innovation, that hasn't asked for more creativity. Uh, and um, the, 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 very often, organisations get locked into activity, get locked into task, so that diaries are filled up. They're filled up to overflowing with meetings, with, with strategy planning sessions, um, with, with, with all sorts of organisational activity. Yet, um, when, when, when we ask leaders what, what's missing, they, they tell us that what's missing is, is the time to think, the time to, to actually have some free time to start being letting the brain think about more creative issues. So it's some focus time, it's planning time into the diary to just actually do that, to let the brain do, do, do its job. I, I tech companies get this and um, they, they have all sorts of strategies to make sure that people have, have that sort of structured approach to creative thinking and ideas generation. We also know that our own neuroscience approach to development, integrating psychometric assessment and neuro-based coaching and facilitation delivers results. And this is backed up by research that so shows such approaches deliver three times more impact on individual and team performance than formal traditional training and development. Okay, point, point well made. But what about the cynics amongst us? You, you know there are views in certain quarters that question the use of neuroscience knowledge in human behaviour and in the workplace. Well, it's our job to convince them, particularly if they're in a strategic leadership position. We need to present the evidence, the facts. By learning more about neuroscience, 
we can gain knowledge that will add value and make a difference to our lives, both in work and social settings. And, and how do you respond to those believing that neuroscience removes the mystery of being human and gut feel is everything? Yes, yeah, gut feel, gut feel is an emotion driven by a chemical reaction to the brain. No, no more, no less. In turn, it's influenced by our upbringing, peers, values, and thousands of other experiential inputs. To understand that, and also create the self-awareness to achieve a balanced viewpoint by taking account of other possibly more rational indicators the brain is processing, will benefit leaders. Mystery will still inevitably remain. It's just mysterious from a different perspective and in a different way. Um, so. As an example, the latest frontier of learning in physiology is the new field of cellular memory, based on a theory that all cells contain genetic 